The Ark of the Covenant is a sacred object described in the Old Testament of the Bible as being a wooden chest covered with gold that contained the stone tablets inscribed with the Ten Commandments. According to the biblical account, the Ark was built at the command of God by the Israelites during their wanderings in the desert and was later placed in the Holy of Holies in the Temple of Jerusalem. The Ark was seen as the symbol of God's presence among the Israelites and was carried with them during their journeys. It was also associated with many miraculous events, such as the parting of the Red Sea and the collapse of the walls of Jericho. Moses receives the command to build an Ark of Acacia wood. Within this Ark were to be placed the tables of the law which God was about to give to Moses. Upon the top of the Ark, probably not as a lid but above the lid, was a golden plate upon which two cherubim, with raised wings and facing each other, covered the Ark. From the place between the two cherubim, God promises to speak to Moses, as often as he shall give him commands in reference to the Israelites. According to the tradition contained in the Pentateuch the sacred ark was built at Mount Sinai and was taken by the Israelites along with them to Canaan. When Israel had been conquered by the Philistines, the ark was taken from Shiloh in order that Yahweh should aid his people. When Philistines yet conquered and captured the ark, the many misfortunes that overtook them made them think that the possession of the ark was destructive to them and they sent it back. The ark then settled in a holy tent for priests until King Solomon placed the ark of the covenant in the holy of holies of this temple, where it was placed under the wings of two mighty cherubim images. The ark is believed to have been destroyed with the destruction of Jerusalem by King Nebuchadnezzar. The ark has been linked to several of the Old Testament's miracles. It is said to have cleared impediments and poisonous animals from the path of the Israelites during the Exodus. When the Israelites crossed the Jordan River into the Promised Land, the Bible says that the river stopped flowing the moment the ark bearers set foot in it. And many believe that when the Israelites besieged Jericho, they carried the ark around the city for a week, blowing trumpets until, on the seventh day, the walls fell down, allowing easy conquest. This is what archaeology is telling us about the real Jesus. But in 597 and 586 BC, the Babylonian Empire conquered the Israelites, and the Ark, at the time supposedly stored in the Temple in Jerusalem, vanished from history. Whether it was destroyed, captured, or hidden nobody knows. One of the most famous claims about the Ark's whereabouts is that before the Babylonians sacked Jerusalem, it had found its way to Ethiopia where it still resides in the town of Oxum, in the St. Mary of Zion Cathedral. Church authorities, however, say only one man, the guardian of the Ark, is allowed to see it, and they have never permitted it to be studied for authenticity. Another claim is that the Ark was hidden in a warren of passages beneath the first temple in Jerusalem before the Babylonians destroyed it in 586 BC but that theory can't be tested either, because the site is home to the Dome of the Rock Shrine, sacred in Islam. Digging beneath it simply isn't an option. What was the significance of the Ark of the Covenant? When the word Ark is mentioned in correlation to the Bible, many picture Noah's Ark, the gigantic boat housing two of every animal before the big flood. The picture of the Ark of the Covenant can be less common in Christian culture. What was this Ark and what was its significance? It held four gold rings on the bottom, each with a gold-plated rod inside used to carry the ark. It also had a golden lid with two wide-winged angels facing one another. The Lord said he would come to speak to the people between the placements of the two cherubim. Jewish and Christian tradition presents the Ark of the Covenant as the physical manifestation of God's presence and supreme power. Ancient Israelites marched the ark into battle and brought whole cities to their knees. The Ark was so sacred that touching it meant instant death. And once it was laid to rest in the Temple of Jerusalem's holiest chamber, only the High Priest was allowed in its presence and only once a year. Then Babylon sacked Jerusalem in the 6th century BCE, and the Ark disappeared. In the thousands of years since, its fate has stymied readers of history. Perhaps most famously, it inspired Steven Spielberg's blockbuster Indiana Jones film Raiders of the Lost Ark. Finding the Ark's real location probably doesn't involve an adventuring archaeologist and secretive Nazis, 
But what do we know about the Ark's final resting place? One of the most well-known theories about the Ark is linked to Ethiopia's 14th century national epic, the Kepra Negist. According to this account, the Queen of Sheba visited King Solomon in Jerusalem during the 10th century BCE and had a son by him on her journey home. Their son, named Menelik, returned to Jerusalem once he was of age. Although Menelik ultimately chose to go back to his mother, Solomon sent with him a company of Jewish scions. But unbeknownst to Solomon or Menelik, these companions, frustrated about leaving Jerusalem, decided to take a souvenir of sorts, the Ark of the Covenant. It was too late for Solomon to retrieve the sacred vessel. Menelik brought the Ark with him to the city of Aksum, and, with the Ark at his side, he later conquered a number of surrounding territories for what would become the Ethiopian Empire. The Kepernegist and its account of the Ark are major parts of Ethiopia's national history. Although many scholars now believe the text to be apocryphal, Ethiopia's medieval kings, called the Solomonic dynasty, claimed direct descent from Menelik and Solomon. This dynasty ruled until 1974, and their biblical connection was codified in Emperor Haile Selassie I's 1931 and 1955 constitutions. Apart from the Ethiopian government, the country's largest religious denomination, the Ethiopian Orthodox Tawahedo Church, understands the Kebron Negus to be legitimate Christian history. According to church leaders, the Ark of the Covenant has for centuries been closely guarded in Aksum at the Church of St. Mary of Zion. Not even the High Priest of Aksum can enter its resting chamber. Its sole custodian is a virgin monk who cannot leave the sacred grounds until his death. The Ark's influence, though, is felt throughout the Ethiopian Orthodox world. Each one of their churches houses its own tabot, a sacred replica of the Ark. Tabots are kept in the Kedis Kedusan, or Holy of Holies, and are only taken out during festivals and times of need. Indeed, each tabot is venerated as if it were the Ark itself. Nowadays archaeologists may have possibly found a temple with a stone where the shrine once rested. The site of this structure is a half hour southeast of Lod and carries the potential to verify the authenticity of the biblical story. Israeli newspaper Haaretz reported that archaeologists excavating a 3,100-year-old temple in the ancient settlement of Beth Shemesh, west of Jerusalem, have uncovered an unusual stone table that seems to match that which was described in the Bible as playing a role in the story of the Ark of the Covenant. Beth Shemesh was once a border town between the Israelites and the Philistines, in a region where the two peoples often clashed. Tel Aviv University archaeologist V. Lederman announced to the media, this would be a rare case in which we can merge the biblical narrative with an archaeological find. Lederman is leading the Beth Shemesh to dig along with his colleague Dr. Shlomo Bunimovitz. Bunimovitz said, There is a lot of evidence that this was indeed a temple, when you look at the structure and its content, it's very clear that this is not a standard domestic space but something special. When one faces the east with the rising of the sun, the structure opens onto a platform commonly used for religious ceremonies. Inside what archaeologists are calling the temple, there are two large round concave stones into which gutters had been carved. These may have been used for wine and or small olive presses to produce sacred oil, according to Lederman. In the immediate area, there is also a treasure trove of decorated artifacts, jugs, cups and a pile of animal bones, which are all hints that rituals took place at the site. At some point in the mid-12th century BCE, the structure was purposefully destroyed, and the pottery vessels had been smashed to pieces. National Geographic Society fellow and archaeologist Fred Hebert once said that searches for biblical relics are compelling, but ultimately doomed to failure. Even if there is an ancient, ark-like object in Ethiopia, it's still impossible to determine if it is one of the biblical legends, we are talking about things the crossroads between myth and reality, he said. I think it's great to have stories like the Ark of the Covenant. But I do not believe, as a field archaeologist, that we can use the scientific method to prove or disprove. Could Hebert be proven wrong or is this yet another one of those cases?